Hello everybody, it's the City Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Progetto 46. This is a tier 8 Polish premium tank, and uh, it, it's actually one of my favorite tier 8s in the entire game. It's fantastic, I don't know why I don't see more of them. But whatever, coffee. I don't know about you guys, but good morning. Hope you're enjoying yours, I know I am mine. Um... But, you know, let's go ahead and let's dive right into it, take a look at some statistics here, and then check out some of the gameplay that I've had inside this tank. So, Progetto uh, M35 Mod 46. Starting off, 212 standard pin, 259 premium pin, 45 millimeters of a high explosive pin, 240 alpha across the board, 400, well, <laughs> 420, haha, 320 uh, high explosive. Like that, 1400 hit points, so if you are, um, I don't know, um, ARVEs, um, yeah, careful, you will get one shot. I already had one of those happen today. Well, during the time that I was putting in matches to get recordings for the tank. Yeah, it's called fun. Uh, 55 top speed, 20 in reverse, along with that, 390 view range. Um, detectability range, this right here, uh, I've actually gotten mine down in-game to 300 meters right on the dot, and I believe my moving concealment is 308. So it's pretty nice to have that. Let's go ahead and go down, check out the rest of the gun. We're looking at 7.28 rounds per minute, which technically, I mean, right and wrong all at the same time. Uh, module damage, 122. That's average for your 90 millimeters. Uh, 90? Yeah, 90. Brain farts. Okay, damage per minute, 17.47 without a gun remember. Uh, ammo speed, here we go. 929 for the base. For the standard round, 1,250 for the premium, 732 for the high explosives. So if you are going to be loading high explosives inside this tank, make sure that you give your target quite the amount of lead. Look at that AP, APCR, and HE. At least it's not APDS or APDF or whatever the heck they call it, because I think it's just dumb. Really, yeah, whatever. Okay, along with that, aim time, 2.1 seconds. Uh, shots per clip, 3, so it's a 3 on auto loader. 2, second interclip reload, which is actually really nice in this tank. It doesn't really feel like it has that long of an interclip reload time. Honestly, I'm just blown away that I don't see these as much as I feel like I should. Um, shell reloads individually. We're looking at 14 seconds for the first shell, 11.6 for the second shell, and then 10.6 for the final shell. Uh, 45 round ammo capacity. Um, in the entire time I've played the tank, I've actually never run into a moment where I've ran out of ammo at the end of a game. Um, I think 45 rounds on this is absolutely fantastic and there's no issues if anything i actually run out of ammo uh more often on my lpc than i do inside my progetto along with that we're looking at 0 0.33 accuracy so honestly you don't need any accuracy perks on this you can take steady aim i do believe on my build i am running steady aim um but Overall, it's gun handling feels absolutely fantastic, extremely responsive. Accuracy during turret rotation, 1.19. It's kind of funny how we have the turret rotation inside here. And then in the game, we have vehicle rotation, which is kind of like, why don't you just add them to everything? Yeah, the vehicle during movement. That's dead center of the screen. Accuracy during movement, 2.35. It's a little bit confusing how over here on the website, we didn't even see it once. 9 degrees of gun depression over the front, uh, 20 degrees of elevation. So, you know, it's pretty happy. It can look up 9 degrees of gun depression. It's not the most depressed tank in the game, but it's getting close. Um, I do believe there is a little bit of a penalty aiming over the rear. There is. So once you hit your back corner, let's come around here. You're going to hit your back corner about there, right at the very edge of the track. Drive wheels coming over. And then you're going to be limited to 4 degrees of gun depression over the rear. So keep that in mind if you're going to be playing the Progetto. Here, there we go. Line it back up. Come back over. We're going to be looking at the turret armor. 80 millimeters, 60 millimeters on the side, 25 millimeters on the rear. So watch out. High explosives hurt this thing a lot. And I believe I chose, like, the worst time to play this tank. But it, it is what it is. <laughs> so many mistakes. Uh, turret traverse, 36 degrees per second. Along with that... Uh, primary, whatever the heck they mean by primary position. Uh, it's on a turret. All right. Engine power, 652 horsepower, 18.63 horsepower to ton, which makes that 55 top speed feel absolutely amazing. And then the 20 reverse just makes it really responsive on a ridge line or moving around wherever you're going. It doesn't really matter. Traverse speed in the tracks, we're looking at 46 degrees, uh, terrain resistance, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and then one. In all honesty, you do not need off-road driving on this tank at all. 
Um, but between me and Blade, I ran off-road driving on mine and he didn't run one on his. I did pull away a little bit more, so off-road driving might benefit just a tad bit. But it's not a huge advantage compared to other perks that you would actually be able to run on the tank without much of an issue. And right here, the armor model that you're looking at, this is against a 105 millimeter from the AMBT. So this is 105, just 30 millimeters of side armor. So you can side scrape against 90 millimeters if you know what your opponent is using to, to, during the time that you are pulling around him. Other than that, everything is almost essentially going to rip right through you because your top armor is 25, behind that is 20. Your hatch is only 60 millimeters. Your frontal armor is only 60. However, you can pull corners with your frontal armor because you got 60 and then 80 on your lower plate. So if you really want to, you can kind of over pull a little bit, bait some shells. I've done this quite a bit. Um, sadly, none of them inside the current replays that you guys are going to be seeing inside this tank. But it is an amazing tank, in my opinion. And as I said, I'm just surprised that no one, it almost feels like no one plays the Progetto. Uh, as I am sitting here being a Muppet, trying to remember everything that I have set up, let's go ahead and dive into the first replay here on Arctic Region. Up against tier 10, so the uh, worst possible matchmaking that the tank is going to be seeing. And Arctic Region inside of my Progetto. The way that I like to play this map is a lot different compared to most. I am a bit aggressive when it comes down to it. I like to utilize my uh, gun depression, my concealment, the way that the build's put together, and everything else that I have on this. For instance, I'm running optics, loader, camouflage net, and then the fourth equipment slot doesn't exist because that essentially system that outlines them, whatever the heck it's called, I never even look at it, the targeting system, I believe. Yeah, that used to be an in-game mechanic, but was removed about two and a half years ago, and I, I just, I think it's dumb that they removed what was once a uh, in-game mechanic. In all honesty here, I didn't know what tank I was looking at, and then once I realized what tank it was, which it is the turtle, I thought to myself, ooh, I am extremely lucky that he didn't snap me. Just flies right over. Some great dispersion value. Uh, so far up to 544 assisted. And yes, I am taking full premium on this. Uh, during the time that I was playing it, we were ending up against a lot of tier 10s, so I could have just fully outfitted it with nothing but premium rounds. And then just went a little bit crazy inside of it. Pros of the tank. So, you know, let's talk about some of the pros. You have really good mobility. Along with that, your gun handling feels fantastic. It's really responsive. You have enough concealment to move around the map without really being worried about being spotted out as long as you're keeping track of your safety net on the bottom right on your mini-map. That dotted line that comes around your tank, that is your safety net. Everything else other than that, that is considered your view range. Um, someone asked me the other day if you had to be facing an opponent for them to be spotted by the way that it's put up. I said, no, that is your cone of vision. That's how much you see. That is the area that you see. Everything else around you, anything that's within inside that circle has a chance of being spotted. And his question confused me a little bit. But yes, for anyone that's that's not clear to, that's how it works. Also, for anyone wondering, um, something that's just completely random I'm going to throw in because I actually had to tell a couple more people about it today. If you hold RB and then the equivalent of RB on PlayStation, which is R1, it's your top right bumper, okay? That locks your turret. It kind of blew me away that I actually had to tell a few people about that today. But it is what it is. Just share it, I guess. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised, <laughs> but whatever. Um, so far, slow game, up to 1,309 assisted with 213 damage dealt. But right here you can see 330 meters away from the AT-15 and had a really good concealment as long as I was not firing. Since the AT-15 was pulling up backwards up the hill, we had a little bit of a view on the flat part of his turret as he was coming up. Right here, we're going to be aiming for the hatch, I do believe. From this angle, now that I'm looking at it here, I don't know if he's using gun depression or if he was still top down to us and I could have aimed into the right and hit the non-angled hatch. I could have hit the flatter part of the roof, the deck of the roof. That would have been better. Here we go, T-57, and we get spotted out by the T-57, which means that he's running a really good crew, and he's running optics along with situational awareness and born leader. So yeah, he catches us out without much of an easy, like without much of an issue because of his uh, 400 base view range. So keep that in mind against people who are using 
Um, your effective concealment against targets, for instance, I have like 420 or 410 base view range. You're looking at about a 350 meter safety net against them. But against opponents with 390, 380, um, your overall effective camo rating is effective essentially the entire time. And here we go, using the trees in between us and the AT-15. We're going to back up a little bit. We don't want to get pulled out. Just give it a little bit of time, load in that final shell. 7.2 second reload time, not including the interclip that gets put in the way. There we go. And Vasante C45, trying to find a shot here. I don't know if he's using gun depression or if he's facing down. It does look like he is stuck a little bit down. Yes, he is. And we still fire and ricochet off of his hatch because that top armor on the Vasante is 30 millimeters. But so far up to 1627, and I believe right now it's time for me to take a little bit of a move and head around the map. The goal is, later inside the game, seeing where the flank kind of fell apart near the top of the map. Uh, there's a couple locations I like to go to, but for this one, you want to try and find somewhere safe that you can hit that can still apply a little bit of pressure and support the team knowing that your front line is going to essentially fall. So it's now time to provide view range somewhere else. And there's one in the VZ-55. Trying to find the track. There we go. There's two. And there's a third blind shot taking the VZ-55 out of the game. Um, Athono. Athino. If I... Athin? I, I completely bombed your name. And yes, I know. That three shots that I just fired at you was absolutely disgusting. And whenever I did it, I sat there and I thought to myself, Wow, that was wrong in so many ways. But what else is there to say about it? I'm sorry. <laughs> you overexposed. <laughs> I, took, I took that opportunity. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and start jumping into some of the cons of the tank. Ricochets. They are very rare. There's almost no side scripting inside this tank unless opponents are loading heat against you and you know that they're loading heat and that they're, they're not running the um, advanced reload system to be able to swap shells. Or if you know they're, they have enough heat pen just to rip through your 30 millimeters of armor to begin with unless you're maintaining the 85 degree auto ricochet angle. It's really specific inside this tank that you get ricochets and it's extremely rare, it feels like. So one of the biggest things is you have to use your concealment. You have to think about the map and you kind of got to pre-map where you want to go prior and then engage from there and do it that way. Uh, right here, I'm trying to use the bush to my advantage. There we go. We're going to throw out the last one. Pulled out a little bit too far where the uh, Centurion was capable of spotting us. But there's a tiny little bush right there in the corner that you can kind of use to fire through to get shots in the middle from there. But that is what that is. Um, another con, I, I would say firing the last shell. Then again, for any advanced reloader, um, any true auto loader where it's, you load one at a time, um, firing the last shell is always going to kill you. It doesn't matter which one it is. But honestly, in this tank, firing the final shell, I don't feel like it penalizes me too much just because you have a decent reload with 240 alpha and you're capable of getting in there. I was getting a little bit greedy, kind of wanted to go after that. Um, you know, the Death Star there, the 183. And uh, I missed the Waffle, got a hold of him. I was a little bit worried. I do believe that the Death Star did fire and miss, and that's why the um, Waffle was, a, you know, not worried about being aggressive up against him and taking it directly. No, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about the tank, except for this is honestly an absolutely fantastic tank in multiple situations and it allows you to do so much work a ridge line and then you get shot at by tier 10s using heat rounds and you wonder yourself why i i'm in one of the most lightly armored tanks and here you are wasting 4,000 credits a shot but it is what it is he's already preloaded he was more worried about the um team that was coming up from the uh, left side of him than he was about me coming up to his rear so i guess the heat hit me is okay but 3,618 damage dealt, uh, 1,721 experience earned, um, 1,309 assisted, no damage blocked. That's going to be about the average that you're going to be seeing inside of the Progetto. Uh, 46, along with that, taking down tier, tier, two, tier 10 vehicles by myself, and, well, not by myself, but ensuring the kill and getting a medal out of it. Uh, yeah, the brain has farted. The 
Brain has indeed farted. All right, next up, the second replay here. Um, I was actually switching between the um, P44 Pen turret and the uh, Progetto 46 during the time that I was recording and getting my matches in. And you're going to notice something about this match. Whenever this one loads in and we start going places, take a look at my view range and take a look at my concealment on the map at the bottom right. Take a look at my reload. What seems off to you? Well, I'll tell you what's off. I'm a bit crewless. Because I have no clue where my crew is. So I'm crewless. And that's all it is. A match without a crew. And I didn't realize I didn't have a crew. I kind of sat there and as I was driving down there, I was like, this feels a little bit off, but okay. And I got all the way down to the corner here in Melanovka, like, oh, okay. I, 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 I'm not spotted. <laughs> I feel okay. <laughs> Am I okay? I don't feel too okay. All of a sudden, Detective pops up and is like, Oh, I don't feel good at all. Uh-oh. Have you guys ever had that moment? Because I, I sure did. And I'll tell you now. I didn't like it. Yep, there we go. The boar asks him, sitting there like, oh, I'm not spotted. And I see the Detective pop up and I sit there. I'm like, oh no. Blade. I'm clueless. But this boar ask is actually going to be the one extremely clueless coming up here pretty soon. Because I don't believe Blade got spotted as he was coming over. And during this time, um, Blade was playing inside of the T-27 General. Here we are. We're going to throw one, 232. But I don't know if I went for the reload or if we went after damage. There we go. There's one on the track. There's two. And Blade put two inside of him as well. But Blade did take a hit from the Boros. But the Boros is on the 59 hit points. And now that I know that I don't have a crew, um, my strategy for this map kind of changed. Now it's time to work the ridge to my right and try and rely on the bushes. And if I take damage getting side shots on enemies, then I take damage. There's nothing that I can do about it. Because um, the 75 pushing up the way that he is. And with 1920, he is fully upgraded. I don't know if he had the uh, top gun or not, which more than likely is taking zoom in. He does have the top gun. We're going to put one, two, and we're just going to take the damage got, that got sent our way. I'm not even worried about it. Um, so far at the 1,190 damage dealt, 278 assisted. I'm taking a look behind me. I want to see the CS because I have no idea what's going on. My situational awareness kind of went out the window because I was thinking about my crew not being there, which made me extremely hesitant. But this is probably a really good showcase on how comfortable the reload does feel. I mean, don't get me wrong, 9 seconds for 240 alpha does kind of suck. And now we're going to put 1. We're going to ram the Borask. We're going to wait, make sure the shot's going to pin. We're going to put two. We took a couple of shots from the Soma and uh, the other heavy off the side there, but the Soma, I believe, hit me twice. But totally worth it, taking down the E-75 and the Borask out of this match. And um, I told Blade, I'm sorry. He was yelling at me that he's not spotted. How did artillery hit him? Well, I was spotted. And I was behind you. I'm not thinking in 3D, Blade. Stop yelling at me. I can still hear you. And here we go. Progetto. First shell, ricochets. Second shell, hit the Amorak, take the time, aim, aim, aim. And Amorak. So one thing about the Progetto that I really like, if you pre-Amorak somebody, and you can find the position that you Amorak them again, and try to lead your shell into that exact spot where their Amorak is located, you're almost guaranteed an Amorak. I've done it so many times inside the Borask, uh, the T-77, the T-57, even the um, VZ-55, and even the um, general T T-27 that Blade's in currently. Um, Autoloaders have got some of the best ammo rack potentials that you can throw out at people. But don't get me wrong, your ammo racks do kind of suck. Speaking of which, inside of the Progetto here, your ammo rack is located right in the front on the right side of your front, so whenever enemies are facing at you, they're going to be aiming a little bit to the left to hit the ammo rack and everything else from your front. Plus, you have a little bit of ammunition inside the back of the turret. But so far in the entire time that I've played the Progetto, I haven't really ran into a problem with my ammo rack being hit often. And that's kind of just where it goes for me. Along with that, your driver, uh, gunner, commander, uh, loader, I believe. You have four crew members inside the tank as well. 
Uh, what else? Your engine, your fuel tank and engine are located in the back of the tank. They're all one big block. Nothing to really worry about there. Uh, yeah, looks really nice. It's situated really well inside the tank. There we go, second shell. We're going to be shooting the rock, not having enough accuracy. Um, right here, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to turn a little bit to the right. My goal is knock down this tree a little bit to the right. I messed up a tad bit, but that right there makes it to where you can snipe up on top of the ridge where Blade is. Then you can fall back, come behind this tree and this bush, and fire through it and have two locations that you can fire from. That does provide a little bit of an advantage. But so far, it is four to nine. This is not looking extremely well. And here I am just taking all the risks in the world, even though I don't have six cents, but I do have a targeted indicator saying that I am spotted. So pull up, pull up, pull up. Safe. Take the time to aim. We got two shells loaded. We're gonna put one. We're gonna put two down range because we want to guarantee that damage. Just slow them down as much as we can, because that's about all we can do. Nomad SN. The somewhat. We're going to put our final shell into the Indy Panza there. Dropping him down. And then just taking 10 seconds to reload. Absolutely disgusting. On that reload time. And can't seem to find the shot here, but since I have no crew, I don't have all the benefits of my perks. I don't have my concealment that I normally go with. I don't have my view range that I would normally have or my reload. So really, this is a match that kind of just made me sit in the back corner the entire time and just end up in a last stand, even though we threw out a lot of damage and took a lot of control in this area. And I'm sorry, Blade, for getting you hit by your artillery, but it happens. So, even in a matchup like this, I still have 18 rounds left and still have 6 high explosives. I'm up to 4,774 damage dealt. Honestly, the 45 rounds of ammunition these tanks get, it's really all it needs. It doesn't need anything else. It's absolutely fantastic, and I have no problems with it. Well, long story short, this match ends with me dying and having a little bit of a retaliatory run charging at the people who came in to come kill me so we'll go ahead and skip ahead a little bit actually we'll go back just a tad bit centurion 51 came over i have three shells i have like a 50 50 chance to kill him two three one hit point and i thought to myself you know what i'm gonna die either way H here is my retaliation i'm coming to try and ram you there's a shot and then there's the soma somewhat the sm taking me down against a Centurion 5-1 with one hit point left. I mean, either or, I was going to die, but seeing the one hit point left was like just a little bit of like assault on the wound, I guess. No commander equipped, still made 102,000 silver profit. The assisted would have been a lot better that match if it would have had a commander equipped and probably would have changed the side of the battle a little bit. And look, we had a ricochet, 150. Uh, mastery badge, um, demolition expert for an ammo rack, high caliber sniper, and then the mark of excellence on this hasn't really gone anywhere in a very long time that I've had the tank, so, yeah, nothing really much to talk about on the tank except for, I think the Progetto is absolutely amazing, and there's one thing I totally forgot to do with you guys, and that is going over my equipment and my perks, so real fast, oh, uh, I gotta drop myself, uh, we have optics, rammer, um, camouflage net, basically just a generic loadout for this for me whenever I go nice and aggressive. And as you guys probably heard her talking inside the match, man, is she loud. Like the normal commander, uh, they're, they don't even compare. But six cents, rapid loading, steady aim, born leader, silent driving, camouflage expertise, muffled shot, track mechanic, and situational awareness. Muffled shot, so... And a lot of the time that I've been playing the game, I've realized one thing about Muffled Shot. It doesn't benefit from firing behind bushes, but it does benefit you whenever you fire in the open more than behind bushes. Behind bushes, as long as you back up and your bush is a solid figure and you fire through it, you have no issue. But this perk right here allows you to fire in the open a little bit farther than your safety net will allow and still stay concealed against the target that you were firing at. So that's kind of what a Muffled Shot does but from behind bushes and behind everything else, it doesn't really work out as 
as well as some people think it might or how much it might increase you. Uh, there's kind of this base level and how much you can get from behind bushes and then the perk out of the top. I don't really see the benefit of it, but some people do. I don't. Um, other than that, I forgot to tell you guys the price tag on this tank. Oh, it's 11000 You're better off buying the LPC because at least that thing has 280 heat pin. Oh, by the way, don't worry. I'm a super uni, and the only way that I'm a super uni is by drinking coffee out of my unicorn mug. And spilling it on myself a little bit. You didn't see it. I did. It's manly. Don't you dare judge me. Other than that, you guys, it's been nice. Hope you guys have a na nasty day. No, fantastic day. I don't know how the other one came out, but it is what it is. You know what? It is late for me. It is 1049, and I'm rotating to swing shift tomorrow. Um, yeah, at the time of recording this. So, oh, you can imagine how I feel going from graveyard to swing. You guys have fun? Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. Let me know what your opinion is in this tank and why you feel like you don't see a whole lot of them inside the matchmaker or maybe why the meta doesn't really move around the Italian autoloaders and their concealment along with their fantastic gun handling in all honesty because they're absolutely amazing. Other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time that you're catching this or if you're catching it a year from now. I doubt they'll buff this thing in a year, but serious. Good day.